the first one is going to be the ends of my feet or my insteps. So notice, here I am. I have attacked Seth with the longest range tools in my arsenal, which go further than anything else. The soles of my feet. Even if you put your foot up, uh, right foot up, please, Seth. And I'm like, okay, now I'm using my instep. That's still doing the same thing. I'm, I'm attacking Seth with my instep in the back of my left thigh. Also, what? The sole of my right foot. Now, as you get a little bit closer, you run into the next line of my defense. And notice that my hands and my knees, like my outstretched hands, go to about where my knees go. So if you lean on me, whatever guard that I happen to be using is going to be at the second level of my defense. The third level of my defense involves passing my knees, and you've now engaged just my elbow. You haven't really latched me down yet. Now, this is not where I would be. This is not where I'd be sitting. This is just so I can talk to you guys. But if you notice, he hasn't gotten to my shoulders yet, but he's most certainly bypassed the first layer of my defense, my feet, the longest range. Then he bypassed the second longest range of my defense, which is my knees and or my palms of my hands. Like using the palms of my hands here, could you lean on me? It's horribly inefficient, and I feel bunched up, and my arms are there, or lean heavy. I can keep this guy away without too much trouble. Why? Because I'm utilizing a shorter stick to keep this guy off. So again, I've got my spear, which is super long, but if you're right in my face, yeah, I could try to find a way to maneuver it, but it's very difficult. If I had a shorter spear that's, let's say, about yay long, well, now it's in between me and you very comfortably, and then you get right at my face. I'm like, ah, the spear sucks, so I take out a knife that, again, now occupies the space between us. That's what we're looking to do here and understand that I'm very, very unlikely to kick you from one layer past another into the third. So let's say, for instance, Seth jumps past my defense. He's at the line of my what? This is line, let's say, friends, we'll call this line one, two, and three. Line one is right up in here. I can reply with line two and then move him to line three. But if you're here and I'm trying to get my feet on it, it feels awkward. It's going to be tough. Seth's being very nice and not fighting me right now. He's blocking that. Don't let me get my feet in. Ah, this sucks. But I can get my knee in between me and him, and now my hand on him, and I can replace my defense. And now I'm like, oh, okay, we'll replay, and we'll kind of get back to where we were. It's no different than striking. I'm like, oh, I'm in the clinch. Let me go from clinch to kicking range. Good freaking luck. Go from clinch, pop him off you, hit him a little bit. All right, now we are at a range where I can start to kick you with my shins or my feet or whatever. But the idea is we're going and inching our way in, inching our way out. So very, very important, make sure as we go forward, you understand the different layers of your defense. We're going to be getting into specific techniques and how these all apply, you know, in the context of our series. But also, as you develop as a grappler, regardless of whether or not you end up using the tools, the specific moves and the specific techniques that we demonstrate in this series, recognize the different layers and the different needs that you need to address as a competitor, as a fighter, so that you become as complete as possible and have an answer for each range so that you don't start trying to bring a knife to a gunfight. My wall needs to be structurally sound. Look how my bones line up. Drive forward, please. What's supporting? My foot through my shin, my knee into my shoulder. Watch this, drive heavy. So what's really supporting me? The ground, if we come back, watch this. I'm gonna check him at a further distance. All right, drive now. Now watch this. It's not wrong, but I had to build a structure utilizing my arm connecting all the way to the ground that's going to keep this guy back. I'm keeping Seth at the longest range that I possibly can with my body. The soles of my feet. That is the furthest point from the top of my head. That's the longest weapon that I've got. Let me say I want to use my knee instead. Can you drive forward, please? By bringing my spine into alignment, I support this thing and I create a wall. So Seth can be driving as heavy as he wants. Crush me, please. And I can have a conversation here talking to a camera because Seth, I'm not worried about him beating me up. Run around my guard, please. As long as my wall reorients to fight him, it can be whatever kind of wall I want. I'm going to close my eyes. Play around, please. Watch this. If I drop my hips, drive forward. Whoa. Oh, now the wall recomposed at the level of my shoulders all the way to my knees. But it's still an effective wall. If we come back for a second, Seth drives forward. What's the effective wall now? That's oh, my arms locked out. Now watch. I'm going to bend my elbows. This is no longer an effective wall because it's a wall that can be broken by the pressure on the other side. So what I want us to think about as we're going forward is utilizing our guard not to go and fuck the other person up and grab them and yank them around and do all these things because what I end up doing is a lot of times letting them through a gap in my defense. I want you guys to think about simply stopping this person from coming forward. And if you recognize that there's nothing I can ever do to pass your guard, well, then how can I hurt you? I'm not allowed to hit you under these circumstances, so I can never pass your guard. 
I can't go to side control. So I've got a great Kimura from side control and a great whatever move. How relevant is that? That's like, oh, I've got the best, I'm the best shot in the world with no bullets. Um, it's just that, you know, we all go through that phase in our development where we have certain things in place, certain things not in place, and I'll actually make a mistake without being forced. So again, like a tennis, for instance, the term is unforced error. If I were to play tennis, you don't even need to hit the ball very well. I'm gonna screw myself up. I'm gonna make a ton of unforced errors and you're gonna win the game. Good players do not make unforced errors, generally speaking. So if I'm on the bottom and I don't make unforced errors, Seth is gonna to have to pressure me and create discomfort and create stress and all sorts of things in order for him to get around my guard and cause me a lot of trouble because I shouldn't just remove it on my own. And my job on the counter side of that is as I'm making sure that I'm protecting myself and Seth is staying away and whatnot, or keeping Seth away, let's say you're starting to pressure me. I feel mass shifting into my legs right now. If you lean and compress me all the way in, I have to move now because if you notice, Seth is trapping me between him and the floor. If I'm able to move, I could make him fall forward. I'd have to get myself out of the way. So let's say, for instance, someone's crushing me all the way down. If I'm able to shift out of position, that person can fall to the ground. But let's say, for instance, I'm holding someone up with the palm of my hand, and then all of a sudden I switch and they fall and land on my elbow. Well, one, that would hurt. But assuming that I align my elbow properly, it should actually hold them up. So what I want us to think about doing is creating a hole that they can fall into by moving our hips or by moving down one joint in our body. So here I am, and I'm controlling distance. So see, Seth's on the end of my feet, and now I switch them to my knees. This is, this is just a giant, like, kind of obvious example of how this might work. Another one, again, here, he's pressuring and I move out of the way, making him fall into space. He's trusting me, he's trusting the wall that I'm making, that it's gonna be stable enough for him to lean on and try to fight through, which it should be. If it's not stable enough for him to lean on ever, then he's probably just gonna mash through my guard. For instance, if I'm here and I'm out of position, he just crunches my guard out of the way, and I'm like, ah, oh, that sucks. But if I'm making effective blocking motions, see, I'm adjusting my hips, I'm trying to stay mobile so that as I'm moving, I'm creating structure all the time. So you feel pressure. You're leaning on me the whole time, right, Seth? Yep. Fantastic. I'm making structure this entire time. But if I let that go, notice how Seth fell. That's what I'm looking to do to create an unforced error, rather to force an error in Seth. Because by the same token that I shouldn't be removing my own defense, Seth, you're on bottom for a second. Once you get to a certain level, this is what used to happen to me when I was blue belt. People would every now and then just kind of go like, and they start digging their head in, they get snatched into a triangle. Well, yeah, that's all cool and everything. Aside, assuming I, I most Seth triangled me, but I effectively put myself in that triangle. If we scoot back over a little. Whereas if I'm in position and I'm moving whatever guard it is, do you feel like you have an easy attack on my arms right now? No. Do you feel like you have an easy attack on my base right now? No. If, I, if you start pressuring into me a little bit with his shield, see how moving me off balance. All right, I'm still in pretty good position, but he hasn't made me fall yet. But if you guys have noticed what Seth's right ankle is going to do to mine, oh man, now I fell and he's able to get my arm. I ducked my head out of the way quickly enough that I was able to avoid the triangle, but Seth did what? He made me fall as we're discussing now, but he also asked for my money or my life too. He said, hey, triangle or omoplata? And I was like, oh, omoplata, omoplata. What I do is if I want to play a little bit more aggressively is I can sit up and recreate a wall in front of you with my seated guard, with my shins and my knees and my head and all that good stuff. You know, again, every high level black belt you ever see, particularly no gi, is gonna play this style of position. Um, you know, obviously Marcelo Garcia is one of the most famous, you know, exponents of this position, um, but it's used all over the place. Only problem is what? Is it takes space because here my hips are and I wanna get up and I wanna use my shins as an effective defense against my opponent. But as I try to sit up, I get, because there's nothing underneath me, I get jammed back into the ground. Well, when does this work? Let's say, for instance, I were trying to sit up before the guy behind the camera could walk over to me. Oh, that's easy, because he's got all this space in the world. Only problem is at fighting range, when you're right in front of me, particularly grappling fighting range, when you're right in front of me, by the time I try to sit up, I'm only moving this far. Oh, that's not far at all. Well, relative to how close you are to me, it's actually very far. So what I need to do is get you further away so that you're not able to, even if you know what to do, to stop me. Because again, if you're capable of stopping me and you, like, you have the resources and you have the knowledge, 
you'll certainly do it. If you have the resources, but you don't have the knowledge, well, you might do it by accident. If you have the knowledge, but you don't have the resources, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to do anything. So because we are only caring about fighting people that have both the knowledge and the resources under most circumstances, I have to rob you of the resources in order to be able to safely do almost anything because I can't expect you to just screw up. So uh, <clears throat> here we are. Seth is at range, and I'm controlling, and I'm keeping him away from me. And again, right now, can you describe the pressure that you feel with my right foot? I just feel like you're kind of stepping on it. Right. Are you, so lean forward. I'm fine. Do you feel like I'm jamming my foot? Not at all. I can't even tell you. Every single time I roll, this is one of the ways you can tell someone's not that good. They go, and they kick hard as shit all the time. They over force everything. It's just, that's just not how it works. That's not how it works. I'd rather land one thing and you land zero than I land six and you land four. I want you to hit me zero times. I want you to pass my guard zero times. The most, the most epic, awesome matches are like 10 to 12. Those are not the most skillful matches, usually, generally speaking. You're going to see a lot less action in a high-level black belt match, but it'll go like 6-0. to zero. But someone got shut out. That was a higher degree of safety. One guy was never really exposed. What I want to do is shake shake off my right foot. Seth follows Seth. So again, but if I'm jamming myself, I'm like, ah, it's very easy to make me overcommit. So I do not want to overcommit. So as I get this guy out of position, I am not stomping my leg at him. Let's say I transition, boom, and I break his grip, and I go into De La Hiva. I'm expanding a little bit, but I'm not just, I'm not kicking him off of me. Because if I go kick, I'm like, ah, he starts to immediately squash me. I'm going to sit up into his space, and I'm going to kick him out of it. I'm making him vacate. So what I can do to start with, because if you're driving into me, and you don't want me to do that, it's very hard. So I'll start to try to pull, and I'll move my hips, and I'll try to lift. And as he goes backwards, I start to sit up. So again, I'm moving him, I'm adjusting, I'll pull. As he goes backwards, I start to sit up. The idea that I'm just going to chuck you off of me when you don't want to be, if you know what you're doing, is unrealistic. So same thing here. Let's say I'm in spider guard. And I'm like, okay, I'm moving. I'm like, all right, I want to sit up. I'll start to pull him. He starts to back up. I sit up into the space he vacated. I do not go, and then try to get up. Seth is going to be past my guard so fast, it's not even going to be funny. Again, here I'm on my seated guard, and let's say, for instance, someone jumps by it, and I go, oh, crap, that sucks. All right, that can happen, and Seth ends up over here. Or, let's say, for instance, I'm in my shell position, and Seth bypasses my legs. Because, again, jumping through my entire guard is difficult, but he may absolutely bypass my legs, and now here I am left with only my arms to defend. And what usually happens is we end up in side control, so we are... And I'm, uh, let's play it on this side. And All right, so Seth passes, and I'm like, oh, no, and I'm framing, and people do this shit, and now they're shrimping, and I'm like, oh, no, Seth passed my guard. Yeah, that sucks. And that could happen. But the reality is that there was a line of defense there that was missed, and, uh, and I think it's important that we address that. Um, what we're going to look to do here is start to catch our opponent before he puts us to our back. Because when your elbows are in and you're in good side control defense position, you do have a, have a degree of safety. The problem is it's hard to move, you know. And right now, <clears throat> let's say I want to make my legs as effective as I can. I stay on my back. When I want to make my hands more effective, I sit up and I start to do all that kind of good stuff. Um, this is a position I use all the time. And, you know, again, if you want to see this done brilliantly, you know, look no further than Marcelo Garcia. Uh, but uh, what we're going to be looking to accomplish here is when Seth redirects my first line of defense, I'm immediately replying with my secondary. And now, so let's start with, let's say, for instance, the uh, if, if you're shot over here, the seated guard. So here we are. I scooted to the side, and I was attempting to funnel Seth to my left, his right. But he wasn't having any of it. I made a mistake here, and he bypassed my knee. If I go, oh, no, and I turn away, he's immediately climbing onto my back. Can I defend that? Yeah, maybe, but... Again, let's say that's different. That's no different than I'm shooting at you with my bow and arrow. All right, it's not working. And I say, fuck it. And I drop everything I've got and I run out to bite you. Or I just wait and I've got my sword and I'm like, nah. I wait until Seth gets close enough that I can't use the sword and then I try to bite him. Which is great because I haven't brushed my teeth in like four weeks. So he's probably going to get an infection. Even if he kills me, he's going to die later, tragically. But what we're going to do instead is recognize that I don't need to use my secondary or like my tertiary line of defense and things like that, falling on my back and using my hips and Grammy rolling. I don't need to do that yet. As soon as Seth beats my knee, 
I reply with my collar tied. Now it's important, the same hand that was holding me up in the seated guard when I was on my side is the same hand that's holding me up here. Because if you notice how close my hips are to Seth, if you push me now, I'm like, ah, I fall over. Okay, so you push me now, I don't fall over because my butt's far enough back. Does that make sense? But if my hips are in and I don't want to get pushed over, you push me now, what stopped me from being pushed over? My hand. The closer it is to me, the less effective of a block. The further it out it is, the more effective. So what's going to happen is Seth bypasses my guard. I immediately, my hips are in. My elbow is in close. I'm absolutely not trying to dig it in on them. Like, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. And it has nothing to do with not causing them discomfort. I would love to cause them as much discomfort as possible. They're trying to fight me and they deserve it. But what I'm trying to do is make it as difficult as possible for them to shake my hand off. Most people, when they call the tie, grab the hell out of you. And it's, it's completely unnecessary and it's counterproductive. So again, here we are. I'm on the open phase. I'm playing my Dele Hivo only. I'm playing it with a foot on the bicep this time. Try to lift, not having any of it. I'm like, okay. Notice, I'm rotating my body away from Seth's leg as I keep a strong pull. Can you sit your hips down, Seth? Easy or hard? Hard. How about now? With his elbow real close in, so you guys can see, it's very, very difficult for me to move him. When I've got this space all pulled out, and I have his weight onto his left leg, and the way that we're accomplishing that if we rotate is with an extension from here, I can shoot Seth's right leg out very, very easily so he falls into a hole on his knee. Immediately, I snap up into a triangle. We can finish. Or, alternatively, if Seth sees it coming, we can go right into the omoplata. So sometimes, as I shoot the triangle, he'll duck his head low enough that I have to go to omoplata. Seth was all the way in my guard, and he's getting closer and closer and closer. And he's passing, and I'm sitting up, and I'm trying to keep him, but he ducks underneath. And I'm like, ah, I go to my inverted collar tie, but just not really feeling like I can make this happen. I might switch all the way over to a Kimura style grip. Now notice, from here, before I go to the Kimura, Seth, can you come up to arm triangle me, please? No. If I'm loose like this, can you arm triangle me? Yes. Ah! Okay, what I'm doing is I'm sticking my gut over top of the bulk of his arm here so that he does not just come and grab me up and immediately throw me to my back. Can you go to a seatbelt position right now? No, I can't get my arm out. Right, I'm not letting him get his arm out. This is absolutely critical. So we're going for an inverted collar tie, so pulling super tight to here. And I'm trapping his arm with mine. My thigh is behind Seth's tricep. My uh, humerus and my arm are wrapping around my thigh. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping his elbow separated from the rest of his body. It's very, very important. Drive me to the back, please. Okay, now, real quick. Let's say, for instance, Seth decides to come and snatch my left arm off the mat with the inside of his. Ah, that's possible. And also the inside out. Exactly. He might try to catch me here. These are all concerns. So what I want to do is make sure I keep my hand far enough away. And also, anytime I feel him starting to fish from my hand, I'm going to rock into him and make him use it. So very, very important, making sure that we understand that as our opponent tries to go to his other defensive things, he starts reaching out for me. I'm going to make him use that hand. Oh, now I can actually get my defense back in. Remember, we're always waiting for our opponent to let go because we're preying on the fact that he's latched into this position. Now, with this Kimura style grip, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hip toss him. So, Seth beats my guard, I sit up, he ducks behind, I go to my collar tie, I'm like, man, I trap his arm. Now, from here, very, very commonly, people will try to sit up, try to pull you back in, I'm like, okay, great. And I'm working my way into a Kimura style grip. Now, the Kimura, I don't even have the grip on his wrists yet, but it doesn't really matter. Because from here, I can start to drive back into him. And when he drives into me, I'm going to rise up and dump him over. Now, from here, if he doesn't step this foot up, he's going to roll. What does this remind you of? Come get my back, please. You can do it, right? No. Why not? My arm's trapped. Correct. If I go, oh, no, he's going to get on my back. Well, now he's going to get on my back. If we come back, provided that I keep his arm trapped, I'm going to be fine. And this is where you can start to really effectively look to Kimura, your opponent. Coming back to the other side, 